Hello everyone, a very very good evening to each and everyone out there and welcome you all to this amazing amazing platform of PW Gulf. So this is your math educator Shivangi Rajput and in this one more ultimate free cap, we are going to do the one shot of the chapter that is probability. So what is probability and how is probability related to our day to day life? This is something that we are going to discuss in this particular lecture. So let's start by seeing that what we are going to discuss and what are our topics or today's target. So we are going to go ahead with the introduction to the probability along with what is experiment, random experiment, sample space, equally likely outcomes and are the outcomes of all experiments equally likely along with the measurement of probability and some really important questions and really amazing questions. So let's start with it. So when we talk about probability students what is probability right you attending this lecture it will be either a yes or a no that is a probability if you will just step out in your balcony and see at the wonderful wonderful sky if it is all cloudy and it, you might assume that it may rain so it can rain and it cannot rain that is probability right so basically over here each and everything that we do almost everything that we actually take a step forward from our starting of the day to the end of the day that falls under probability so what is probability student the measure of uncertainty and what does this word uncertainty over here means is something that is not sure of happening it can happen and it cannot happen like from like since very childhood we just toss a coin even in cricket right now also for getting to choose who will choose to bat or bowl we use a coin right we toss a coin whosoever chooses a heads or a tails have a fair equally likely possibility to get a heads or a tail and whosoever gets it get to bowl and that whatsoever feels like so this is how probability affects and it implements in our day-to-day -day life so basically there are certain words that you have learned or have heard in your entire life like most likely almost uncertain most probably no chance at all right for example me going to the party no chance at all i just want to lay on my bed and have a good time and watching netflix and chill so this is one thing most likely so you people are going to most likely get good marks in your exam that means the probability is more almost uncertain this means almost nearby to no it cannot happen right so it's almost uncertain that is one thing most probably for example most probably i'll skip my lunch today so this is one thing right so all these words and all these sentences that i have just used certainly implements two things that are can happen cannot happen that are uncertain that is anything can happen it depends on what i choose right and for example if we talk about rain and anything else that is for whatever nature chooses so this is all about probability students for anything to happen or not to happen for example when the covid strike we used to play a lot of ludo and everything all these games right so on that dice getting a number one or a number six number five number four number three number two number one any number it's a chance of event or we can say it's a probability because any number can come on the dice. So all these things falls under the measurement of our probability and let's talk about what are experiments. So our process which results in some well defined outcomes is known as experiment. For example, I have a coin. If I am tossing it, I am sure that either a head will come or a tail will come right so basically these are what that i am doing experiment whose outcomes i know that these 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 are all the possible outcomes that can come out of this particular experiment for example if i am rolling a die right a dice so on that dice either one can come or two or three or four or five or six right no number less than one no number more than six right so all these outcomes i am already aware about so for all the things that i'm already aware about for all the events that i'm already done with so all these events fall under the category of your 
experiment so a process which results in well defined well defined means some of the outcomes right all the outcomes basically we are already aware about there is for example if tossing a coin it will be either a head or a tail nothing third can come this is something i'm very much sure of right so this is what an experiment when a dice is thrown people possible outcomes are these which are fixed apart from these numbers no number can show up on my dice so this is what an experiment the next thing that we have over here is random experiment random experiments means all the outcomes of the experiment are known in advance but any specific outcome of the experiment is not known same in the case of coin same in the case of dice see all these are experiment where the outcomes we know that but which outcome will come that is something we are not sure of right either a head or a tail can come i'm not sure of that only tail will come right so this is what is known as under experiment the category specifies as random experiment the next we have is sample space the set of all possible outcomes in the experiment is called the sample space for example if i have to write the sample space for throwing a dice i know that only the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 can come on the dice so i can write down the sample space and when we talk about set students we represent it in a curly bracket so the set will be 1 2 3 4 Five and six, and then close. So this is what a set of numbers, a set of numbers that will always and always come. Any one of these can come specifically when we roll a die. So this becomes the sample space of any event. For example, if I have to write down the sample space for tossing a coin, so sample space will be either head can come or tail can come. So this will become the sample space, and in the curly bracket we exhibit the set the next we have is sample space of these four things right so when tossing a coin we know either we can get a head or a tail when tossing the dice we know that we can get 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 when tossing two coins together so either we can get head on both either we can get tail on both either we can get head on one head on the one coin and tail on the other or vice versa of this that is tail on the first coin and head on the other so now when we toss two coins there are in total four possible outcomes now two dice are thrown so when we throw out two dice students what does that mean so if two dice are thrown that is on both of them one one can come on both of them we can say 1 comma 2 can come 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 1 comma 5 and 1 comma 6 now what is this 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 1 comma 5 and so on right for example if we are throwing two dice right so basically when we have one dice and two dice so on the first dice one can come and on the other dice one can come then on the other dice two can also come Three can also come four, five, six, seven, and so on. So we are just making the pair of numbers that we can get. Similarly, on the first dice we can have two, one. Then we can have both the dice as two. Then we have two comma three, two comma four, two comma five, and two comma six. Now on the third one we can have three comma one, three comma two, three comma three, three comma four, three comma five, and three comma. Six. On the other one, we can have four comma one, four comma two, four comma three, four comma four, four comma five, and four comma six, and so on for five comma one, five comma two, five comma three, five comma four, right, and so on for six comma one. So in total, we will have thirty-six outcomes like these. In total, we will have four outcomes. We will have six outcomes, and we will have two outcomes. So these are some events. these are some experiments that we perform and we are well aware about what are going to be the answers the next that we have is equally likely outcomes that means whatever experiment that we are performing there is no alteration there is no biasness in that particular experiment let me talk about a dice 
right? When you throw a dice because you know that the dice is unbiased, it is fair that for whatever number will come, all the numbers have equal possible possibility to come. For example, we know that one to for the dice to come, like for one to come on that dice, so basically one has the same probability as two, as three, as four, as five, and as six. It is not like six is given some biasness and six will come most number of times. No, that is totally luck dependent. That is totally dependent on whatsoever is there on the dice. So when we talk about equally likely outcome, students, what does equally likely outcome means? That all the experiments that we perform and the sample space that we have, the outcomes that we have, each and every outcome have equal possibility of throwing up or coming up on the surface. What does not? Are all events equally likely outcomes? We know about coin, yes, head has the equal probability, tails has the equal probability. When we talk about dice, one has equal probability, two has equal probability and so does all the numbers falling on the dice. Alright, if, if, if I give you a packet, right, for example, students, if I give you a box and this box is full of candies. Right, this box is full of menthol flavored candies. Right, menthol flavored candies. And in these menthol flavored candies, only two candies are there which are lemon flavored. Right, so basically I have what students, I have a box full of candies and basically the majority candies in this is menthol flavor. Only two of them are lemon flavor. If I offer you this box, to just don't look inside the box and pick one, right? So we know that either you can get a menthol candy students or you can get a lemon flavored candy. But since the amount of menthol flavored candies is more in this particular box as compared to the lemon flavored candies, so what we can say that this event, this event is not equally likely that this event is not equally likely event. That means a certain flavor of candy, that means menthol candies have higher possibility of coming out of the box. Why? Because they are more in number. So such events are what your not equally likely. For example, this is a box of balls, right? For example, the red balls are present in more quantity. So even if you just don't look at the ball, look at the box and just pick one ball up, so you will anyhow have more possibility or we can say more probability for picking up a red ball. Why? Because they are more in numbers. So some events can be equally likely, can have equally likely outcomes and some events do not have equal likely outcomes. How to measure probability? The number of favorable outcomes. Now what is favorable students? What is demanded in the question? Whatever is demanded in the question becomes the favorable and then the total number of outcome that means the sample space and what all are the total number of outcomes that are present in your particular question. Now probability are of two types again sure event an impossible event. Now what does sure event over here mean students is sure event over here means that basically when we are choosing something when any event is there in front of us and we have a full sure shot to get it. Now what does full sure shot to get it means? Right, let's talk about it. So when we talk about specifically sure event, that means the chances for that to happen is 100%. The maximum probability that we can have is one. How one? See, this is the formula for calculating the probability students, right? For example, the favorable is 36 and the total outcomes is also 36. That will always result in the cancellation and a fraction of one. Right, so the highest possibility or probability for any event is 1 and over here 1 means 100% and the least impossible event we can say it is 0. What are sure events? 
For example, I bring you a box of candy again with all orange flavor candies. I got a box of candies, I offered you up and that box consists of all the orange flavored candies. Now, if I ask you to pick one, what is the possibility of picking an orange flavored candy? Of course, a hundred percent. Why? Because all the candies in that particular box is 100 percent. That means all the candies are orange. So you will for sure shot pick up an orange candy. That is a sure even. Now in that same box, if I just offer you up, right? In the same box, if I offer you up the box and basically what you have, you have specifically that orange flavored candies. Now from that box of orange flavored candies, if I ask you to choose what, if I ask you to choose one, so what is the possibility and what is the probability of picking up a lemon flavored candy? So basically the probability of picking up a lemon flavored candies is what? zero because there are no lemon flavored candies that are present inside that box so this is how we choose with sure event and impossible event the next thing that's a question that in a cricket match a batswoman hits a boundary six times out of 30 balls she plays find the probability that she did not hit the boundary now the favorable event for the question is whenever a ball is thrown and she did not hit the boundary. See students, first of all in total there are 30 balls which are played. Just listen to the question. In total there are 30 balls which are played. Now out of these 30 balls, in 6 balls she hit a boundary. Out of these 30 balls, 6 balls were the balls in which she hit a boundary. Now, except these 6 balls, what we have, apart from these 6 balls, we have 24 balls. 30 minus 6, 24 balls left where she did not hit the boundary. Yes, where she did not hit the boundary. Right, so over here, when in 6 balls she hits a boundary and 24 balls she did not hit the boundary. So it is asking the probability that she did not hit a boundary students, how do we write it? That probability of the event that she did not or you can just write event. See, this E over here becomes what? The event. Event means what? Whatever is asked in the question. Or in this bracket, you can specify the event that is did not hit the boundary. So, we know what is probability students favorable outcomes upon total outcomes. Favorable, our favorable is did not hit the boundary. 24 is did not hit the boundary. So, it will become 24. Total basically total number of balls that are placed which becomes 30. So whenever we are writing down the probability students we always and always just simplify in the simplest form. So this will become what? 4 by 5. So the probability that she did not hit a boundary is 4 by 5. So this is how simply you can do the question. The next question we have 1500 families with two children were selected randomly and the following data were recorded number of girls in the family and number of families. So compute the probability of a family chosen at random having two girls. So if we have to choose for two girls see number of girls in the family two and how many families 475. So probability of event is equals to favorable that is 475 upon total number of outcomes. So this is how we are going to write down the probability and we can just simplify it and write down the answer in the simplest form. We have to write down the answer in the simplest form, right? This is how we are going to do it. So let's just simplify it. If we simplify it by 5, for example, right? So what we can have, we can have 5 nines are 45 and then we have 25, 5, 5, 3, 0, 0. Again by 5, 5 ones are 5, 5 nines are 45. Again by 5, we will have 16. So the probability over here becomes what? 19 by 16. So this is how you can do it and this is how this question can be done. The next part is asked one girl. So one girl, how many families have one girl students? 814. So what we can simply write? 
फेवरेबल अपॉन टोटल नंबर ऑफ आउटकम्स एंड वी कैन जस्ट सिंप्लीफाई इट टू गेट द फाइनल आंसर राइट सिंप्लीफाइड बाय टू वट एवर बट जस्ट द सिंप्लीफेस्ट सिंपली यू नो सिंपलेस्ट फॉर्म दैट वी हैव टू राइट द नेक्स्ट वी हैव इज नो गर्ल सो हाउ मेनी फैमिलीज हैव नो गर्ल्स टू हंड्रेड एंड इलेवन सो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ इवेंट बिकम्स फेवरेबल upon total number of students that is 211 upon 1500 and that's how we are going to do it right the next thing that we have is three coins are tossed simultaneously 200 times with the following frequencies of different manner if the three coins are simultaneously tossed again compute the probability of two heads so two heads probability 72 total 200 again we can simplify it and get the final answer we can get this as 36 by 100 and we can get by 18 by 50 or we can get by 9 by 25 so this is how we are going to simplify it in the very simplest form and write down the answer i hope that this thing is clear with everyone right let's move forward over here an organization see basically in this question some of you might wonder that ma'am when we have already heard that for one head to come the probability is equal but these experiments are something which are already performed this is a event oriented experiment that is not a random coin is taken the experiments are already performed the outcomes are noted and from these outcomes only you have to write down the result right the next we have is an organization selected two for uh, 2400 families at random and surveyed them to determine a relationship between the income level and the number of vehicles in the family the information gathered is listed so basically suppose a family is chosen find the probability the family is chosen is earning 10000 to 13000 per month owning exactly two vehicles so basically for the family earning 10000 to 13000 and owning what exactly two vehicles will become what c the total family is 2400 what we needed in the question is 29 so this becomes what students 29 by 2400 just see if this is getting simplified or not if not just leave the answer in whatever fraction you have the next we have earning 16000 or more per month and owning exactly one vehicle see 16000 or more and owning exactly one vehicle is 579 so the probability becomes students 579 by 2400 just see if they could get simplified with any of the number and then you can go ahead with it the next thing that we have over here is students let's move to the next question and over here the next question says in a sample c probability is one of the easiest easiest chapter you will come across with probability is one of the most 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 easy beautiful chapter something which is actually related to your day to day life examples you know a dice you throw a dice you play games you know a coin you toss a coin you play games so all these things are actually contributed as a part of your probability very simple very easy very good to go the next we have is in a sample survey and also we have discussed about two coins and two dice that is basically not in your syllabus but just for some extra additional knowledge i have given you that in case if you get the, uh, get that in your paper so that you are able to solve it up so next we have in a sample survey of 45 people let's do some mcqs people so what we have over here is that in a sample survey of 645 people it was found that 516 people have a high school certificate if a person is chosen at random what is the probability that he or she has a high school certificate so the sample was of 645 and 516 people have a certificate right so the probability of event simply we can sort 516 divided by we have 645 let us simplify it by 3 then so we have 3 ones are 3 3 sevens are 21 3 twos are 6 then we have 3 twos are 6 3 ones are 3 3 fives are 15 now we can simplify it with 7 8 9 10 10 all right so we have to think of number that we can simplify this with right so whenever 
you are not able to think. See, 172 and 215 as they are not even getting simplified with 3, it becomes, you know, a bit tricky to just add up each and every number to get it down, right? For example, if I just do it by 7, so 7 twos are 14 and then we are left with 332, no right then we will do it with 11 no right so basically we cannot think of numbers so basically do one thing in that case just find the difference between these two numbers so what is the difference between 215 and 172 students so this will become what 11 we have 3 and then we have 0 so basically the difference between 172 and 215 right so what we have over here is, sorry, 43. It will be 43. All right. So let's see now. The difference between these two numbers is 43. So 43 into, let's say, for example, 4. Right? 4 threes are 12. 4 fours are 16. 17. 172. So we can see that 43 into 4 gives us 172. And what is 43 into 5? 5 threes are 15, 1, 5 fours are 20, 2, 1, 5, and this gives 2, 1, 5 as well. So, what we can say that for 43 fours and 43 fives gives us this answer. So, basically, option number D, 4 by 5, will be the correct answer. So, whenever you have such numbers which looks like almost impossible that they might not get simplified any further, so just calculate the difference between these two numbers and see if they are coming in this table or not. Like the difference between 172 and 215 is 43. Now check whether 43 has like 172 in its table or 215 in its table, it actually works, right? Let's see the next question. In a medical examination of students, a class uh, of a class, the following blood groups are recorded. For in this class, a student is chosen at random. What is the probability the student has a blood group? A, B. So, what is the total number of students that is not given in this question? So, firstly, what we have to find out, how many students have blood group A, B? So, 8 of them have blood group A, B. Now, what are the total number of students over here, students? So, when we add this up, this will simply become what 8 plus 16 becomes 14, 14 and 11. That will become 25, 25 and 15 will become 40. So, total will become 40 and probability of event because these will be the total number of students, all the students. Because all the students, if they are like went through their blood group, you know, whatever. So, basically for examining their blood group, all the students might have either A or the B, A, B or O among these only, right? So, the probability will become 8 by 40 student that will give you 1 by 5. So, option number C will be the correct answer for this question. I hope that this part is clear with everyone. Let's move forward. Now, 80 bulbs are selected at random. What is given in the question? That we are given 80 bulbs are selected at random from a lot and their lifetime in hours is recorded as follows. One bulb is selected at random from the lot. What is the probability that its life is 11 50 hours so 11 50 hours the bulb which has the maximum number of hours is 1100 so can you people actually select something more than 1100 no so basically favorable outcomes over here becomes what zero so the probability also becomes zero because there is no bulb present in the data which has its hours as more than 1100 so the probability becomes zero the next question it says in a survey of 364 children aged 19 to 36 months it was found that 91 like to eat potato chips if a child is selected at random find the probability that he she does not like to eat potato chips right so basically the total number of students over here is 364 out of these 364 91 liked potato chips what 91 liked potato chips so what we have to calculate first of all how many does not like potato chips so basically when we calculate this part that how many people do not 
like potato chip so this is how we get and basically 273 will be the amount of people who do not like potato chips now what we have to do we have to find the probability that is favorable outcomes students or children who do not like potato chips divided by the total number of students now again these numbers are not divisible by 3 as we can see this adds up to 12 but this adds up to 13 the next step that we have is finding the finding the difference between these two so the difference between these two is 91 so let's check out 91 into 2 no that will give you 2 at the end 91 into 3 9 threes are 27 so yes 273 91 into 4 4 ones are 4, 9 fours are 36, 364. So both are getting subtracted by 91, 91 threes, 91 four. So 3 by 4 will be the correct answer. That is option number C. See, this trick always works. Find out the difference between the numbers which are hard to get simplified and then that number will be actually the HCF of these two numbers or we can say the common multiple, the common factor that both of them have. Next question, two coins are tossed 1000 times and the outcomes are recorded as given. Now, if two coins are tossed at random, what is the probability of getting at most one head? Now, what does this at most over here means at most one head? That means maximum you can get is one head and that will also include zero heads. Get this point right for example if you went home and you like told your mom that i'm i need at most at most one chip one, at most two chapatis that means maximum you need is two chapatis and you can get something below that also you feel okay with that but not something more than that so over here we have to find the probability of at most one head at most one head will include this part and also this part that means at most one head limit is one less than that will be acceptable so favorable outcome students will be equivalent to 550 plus 250 that will give you 800 total is 1000 right so probability over here becomes 800 divided by 1000 zeros and zeros cancel 4 and 5 so the probability will be equivalent to 4 by 5 option number b right the next question we have a coin is tossed 60 times what is it saying that there is a coin and it is tossed 60 times and the tail appears 35 times and in the 60 times as we can see students the tail appears 35 times so how many times does the head appears 25 times right so the head appears what 25 times in a random throw of coin what is the probability of getting a head we have already calculated what the favorable part what we need the probability that means favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes 5 fives are 25 5 ones 2 so 5 by 12 option number c will be the correct answer students for the question right because they are asking for head so we have taken that for head the next question that we have students over here is it is uh, given that the probability of winning a game is 0 0.7 what is the probability of losing the game very simple as i have already told you that the maximum probability that we can have is one so basically probability of any event plus probability of that event not is always equals to 1. The probability of winning is 0 0.7. Probability of losing is equals to 1. Probability of losing is equals to 1 minus 0 0.7, which is equivalent to 0 0.3. So this is how we are going to do this question. 0 0.3 will be the correct answer for the question. The next we have is, in a cricket match, a batsman hits a boundary 6 times of 30 balls. What is the probability it does not hit the boundary? We have already done this question. So, out of 30, if 6 are boundary, 24 are non-boundary. So, 24 by 30 students, 4 by 5 will be the correct answer for this question. 
Over here, the next question says the bag contains 16 cards bearing number 1 to 16. One card is chosen at random. What is the probability the number bears are divisible of 3? So, students, we have to check that from 1 to 16, how many numbers are there that are divisible by that are divisible by 3. So, the numbers are 3, it says 6, 9, 12, and 15. So, how many favorable outcomes, students? The favorable outcomes are 5. How many total outcomes? The total outcomes number 1 to 16 is 16. Probability is equals to favorable. Upon total outcomes, 5 by 16 will be the correct answer, students, for the question. The next question says, a bag contains 5 red, 8 black and 7 white balls. So, there is a specific bag, students, and this bag over here contains what? 5 red balls, right? And then we have 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 black balls. I hope you could see that. And 7 white balls. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 balls. All right. So, these are the number of balls that are present in the bag. One ball is chosen at random. What is the probability the chosen ball is black? So, what is the favorable outcome for black? Eight. What are the total number of balls, students? Eight plus five and seven. That is 20. So, outcome basically probability over here becomes what? Favorable outcomes upon total number of outcomes, that means 2 by 5. Option number B will be the correct, correct answer for the question. The next question that we have is, in 65 throws of dice, what we did, we threw a dice 65 times. So, when we threw a die in 65 times, the outcomes were noted as under. So, these were the outcomes. A die is thrown at random. What is the probability of getting a prime number? So, first of all, most of the students do this mistake. They take one. But students just write down a note and it's a very important thing for you to remember that one is neither prime One is neither prime nor composite number. So, you will never take one as either prime or composite number. So, you'll start with two, you'll then go with three, then you will go with five. So, these are the three numbers from one to six which are prime numbers. So, basically the favorable outcomes will become what? 10 plus 12 plus 9. So, this will give you what? 22 plus 9, 31. Total number of outcomes is 65. So, your probability will become 31 by 65. Option number C will be the correct answer for the question. I hope this part is clear with everyone, right? All right. So, this last question, students, is your homework question. You are supposed to just answer down in the chat and just let me know if you people have any, any problem in this. So, this was all about the lecture students. I hope that probability, what are probability, what is probability, what are experiments, random experiments, how to calculate probability in the type of questions. So, these are the all type of questions that are available in your books and some extra questions as well for sure. But again, if you have any doubt, feel free to reach out to me in the down comment section. So till then, thank you so much for attending the lecture. Take care and I'll see you again very, very soon with the next chapter in the Ultimate Recap. Bye-bye.